If your Tesla's warranty is about to expire, then you probably have a few things you might want to do before it really does expire. So this video is all about that. Let's dive right into it. So to start this off, let's find out whether you do have warranty or not. So typically they have a 50,000 uh, new car warranty or four years, whatever comes first. They have an eight year uh, battery and drivetrain warranty. So in order to find that, I'm gonna show you my warranty on the X. It says that you have drive unit limited warranty up until 2025, this is a 2017 X, and a battery limited warranty until July 7, 2025. One thing to note is that the older Model S and X use, do have unlimited miles, which is a nice perk for having an older one, I guess. So if you look at our Model Y in it, it's pretty much the same thing here. Um, you can see here that I still have basic vehicle limited warranty. This only has about 30,000 miles. So I have it up until 2025 since it is a 2021 model or 50,000 miles. I also have a battery limited warranty of 120,000 miles, right? So I talked about 100 to 150. And then same thing with the drive unit warranty, 120,000 miles. And that's pretty much how you check what warranty you have left. When you do have the basic vehicle limited warranty, for example, they mostly cover a lot of those things. If you want to learn a lot more about your warranty and what kind of warranties uh, you may have access to, you know, click on the link below. We have our blog where we explain a little bit more in detail and some technicalities. But since you're watching this, this video is going to be a guide. We're gonna walk you through what I would do right before that warranty mark expires. And you wanna do this roughly, I, I like to do it about a thousand miles because that's like a decent amount. If you travel a lot, go like two or 5,000 miles. So we have our Model Y behind, but we're gonna go and dive into the checklist and go ahead and show you and walk you through. Oh wait, but before we do that, click on the subscribe button because we make this video for you guys so we can help you guys with your test ownership. It's gonna help us if you click on that subscribe and that ring button. So let's go. I have the preliminary list right here. Ours is gonna be a little bit more prettier once we get it in PDF format. But this is what we're gonna be following. So let's let's go through the car. Um, I'm gonna be talking as if it's all cars though, right? So this is a Model Y, but you know, I've owned um, every single model, so I, I'm very familiar with all of them. So first off, what I would check is the door handles. So you wanna make sure that it is opening properly just like that. It shouldn't feel difficult to open. It shouldn't feel like something is stuck. Um, usually the Model 3 and the Y are a much more simple. For the Model S, it goes in and out. That area does go bad pretty often. If it doesn't kind of come in and out consistently, that's, that's a sign that you probably need to get it fixed and that actuators are going out. On the Model X, it doesn't go in and out. It's actually just flush and you just push it. Usually those don't go bad very often. When you do open the door, how are the hinges? Sometimes when you open it, you'll hear a weird creak. Most of the time it's just kind of lubing it up. So maybe get some lubricant and then, you know, the hinges just go inside. Um, so again, in the Model 3 and Y, what's really beautiful about these cars is that they're so much more simpler, I feel like, uh, than the X. The X is like super over-engineered, right? So when I talk about if the door opens well, that's what I'm talking about. So on the X, you open the door, it literally has a falcon door and it goes up, you know, like that, right? So that area, that door can definitely over time uh, be an issue. So for example, on my 2017X, um, I had it replaced where the sensors were off. So it would open, but at a certain time, it would have phantom sensors. What I mean by that is like, there's no one right next to the door and there's sensors that senses what's nearby so that it doesn't open and it opens in an angle where it doesn't hit anything, right? So that's something that you wanna think about, not just the hinges of how it's opening, right? No weird sounds or cracking or anything like that but also the sensors inside the doors is gonna be important for the X. To check the windows, this is really important because all window actuators work the same for most cars, right? Because these are all frameless window, especially during the winter and cold areas, it could go bad. But sometimes what you need to do is calibrate it. So what you do is I believe you hold it down all the way and you push the button all the way down. I forget for like 30 seconds and then you go all the way up and you hold it like that as well. And that should calibrate so, some of the windows as well. You're making sure that there's no weird sounds. Sometimes the cables are weird. Uh, you'll hear some like, kind of like crackling sounds, right? Because the cables are kind of getting caught up on each other. And the other thing is uh, all Teslas are gonna be frameless. 
So when you close, you want to make sure that it goes all the way up to the trim. Check the seals like around the windows. Um, essentially, those seals should be good. Um, but there are cases, I'm sure, where, you know, seals are, are worn out. I mean, if it's leaking, then they should fix that for you as well. Trunk and frunk um, open smoothly. So in my case, I actually have the aftermarket strut and frunk, auto frunk actually installed. So mine opens awesome. It also closes automatically once I push this button. But what you're really checking for is typically, um, you know, if it's, if it's closing. I mean, if you have to really push it hard, there's something wrong either with a latch or something like that. I don't like having a sag, a trunk sag or frunk sag, sorry, because if you have that sag right here, when the water goes down this T, it'll kind of sit there and it'll go down your frunk. So you'll have a lot more water collected instead of flowing down all the way through, it gets stuck right there in that front. So that's something that they could probably fix. Let's go back to the trunk. It's not something that goes bad um, often, but sometimes you'll see that there's some really big misalignments here. That's something that you do want to bring up um, early on into the er er part, early part of your ownership. But just ensuring like that it closes really well, um, you know, when you go down, like, there was no issue with that. I'm gonna open it back up. All right, let's close it again. Let's go to the lights. This is also a common issue that I'd like to get like warranties on is um, typically if there's condensation in this tail light, that's the most common areas that will get that condensation. Um, they will typically replace it. You're gonna be looking for misalignments that you didn't see in the beginning. So for example, like maybe the, like the door is going up and as it closes and as time happens, like maybe it needs a little bit of adjustment. That's something that the shop can do. So if you see that maybe these areas are really misaligned, then this is what you would bring up to, to Tesla and then they may be able to adjust. So you wanna be as thorough as you can when you do put it on the app. So they ask for photos, put those photos in, right? When you first got your car and what it looks like now, that will really help them and they will thank you. Charge ports need to open and close. Um, couple things around the charge port that I've seen happen that I got a warranty on before is if you look at inside of the charge port, there's this rubber protection thing that sometimes comes off, but also sometimes these hinges do act up and they do break. A lot of times it happens, I think, in more colder areas, like if it's too cold. These are heated, right? These are heated, so they have far less issues than they used to. Uh, sometimes you will get, even for the S or 3 or Y, is that you get uneven tire wear. And what I mean by that is when you check, like I actually need tires pretty soon, but when you check your tires, your treads all the way back here, you'll notice that maybe the outer area is really fine, like it's a very, very deep groove. And you get to the inner tire wear, uh, tire wear, and you notice that it is super thin, right? And what's happening is these cars are really heavy and sometimes there's more wear in the inside and that's quite dangerous, right? That's something that you wanna watch out for and if, if it's something that they can take a look at and say, hey, I feel like I'm getting this inner tire wear, can you just take a look at my alignment? You know, that's something that you can ask them for. The Teslas are usually equipped with eight cameras, right, for the newer ones. So I would look at all these cameras, just make sure there are no condensation or water inside of them. That will actually cause these cameras to be blinded. So that's something that I would absolutely bring because these cameras are essential for autopilot, full self driving or enhanced autopilot. So sometimes you'll see some water inside there. I've seen that happen. This is pretty tight and typically only Tesla touches the cameras here and it's calibrated from their factory. So these I haven't seen any issues, but definitely take a look at this, the side pillars right here, and also just check the rear camera as well. We're gonna look at the glass so if there's a chip or like, I don't know, your glass is breaking in the front, typically that's not gonna be covered at all by warranty. But let's say you do have some sort of cracking going on and you can't see any signs of like impact, then this is something that you do bring up and then just ask them if it's something that would be covered. You need to make it clear that nothing was hit and then it cracked. That's really the, the main thing that you need to show. So the last two things on the exterior of the car, I just look under, maybe you hit a few things while you've been driving for the past few years and you might see a hole or a puncture or some damage to the, the bottom part of the battery plate. 
While you're there, I checked the skid plates and there's two skid plates, one in the front and one in the back for the drivetrain here. This is a dual motor, so you'll see two dr drivetrains. I take a look at it. Um, on the Model 3, it's been notorious that that skid plate is breaks and it kind of like flaps and it kind of drags along. Um, that's why we sell, sell the aluminum version. Um, so this is already equipped with that. For the interior, the main thing on, for example, like the Model X that I have, I got it used. Um, it's a 2017. It has MCU one. It does have FSD. Um, however, um, I had the problem with the EMMC issue, um, which is actually a recall. Other things that you want to check around that screen is just making sure that you don't have any like massive yellow banding um, around it. That's actually something that I have seen in the older ones. So we checked the exterior of the camera, just looking at the housing of it. But while you're inside here, you also want to just go into the camera and just making sure that all cameras are super clear. Nothing is obstructing any view and it looks good. Making sure that your heat and cold works. That's something that doesn't go out very often. I haven't really had an issue with that, but just keep that in mind. Just, you know, put it on coldest setting, run it for a little bit, and then put it on, uh, you know, like the hottest setting and then run it for a bit and just make sure that you're getting both of that. If your AC starts smelling, that's not gonna be covered by warranty. That's something you probably need, just need to change your filter. And we, you know, we sell filters and we sell the whole kit so that you can make sure that you get all that funky smell out. You wanna check all your lights are working. This is an easy fix. So just make sure that all bulbs all around is working. So just push it. The good news about this is like, I, I, I know there's a long list, but it's just ensuring that you get the most out of it. But also like I've owned five Teslas now and like I've had very, very little issue. And also it's very minor. So. You know, don't get me wrong, I, I love the cars. I think they're very, very good. So just keep that in mind, like this isn't to scare you. This is just to kind of walk you through, you know, as you kind of get into that year four or maybe that 50,000 mile mark, you drive a lot, you know, making sure that everything is taken care of so you could really continue to enjoy the car without spending all that money, right? Um, one thing that I like to do is, you know, battery range is something that's really important. So this one is a long range all wheel drive and I believe it's rated for 315. Sorry, it's been changing a little bit with upgrades and all that, but I believe it's like 308 at the, when I do 100% capacity. That's pretty good and I have 30,000 miles. So I have very, very, very little degradation. To do that, you can actually go to your Tesla app and you could go to service right over here and you could do request service and then you could go to battery and then other and then battery degradation, just put that. And then if you press next, it'll actually start running diagnostics for you, okay? And it'll take some time, so just so you know, and it'll determine and it'll run it and see if you need to come to service. So and let's say you're like 240 or something like that and you're supposed to get 300. That's a pretty big jump at 100% capacity then that's something worth doing this and then asking service whether, and if it's consistent. Lastly, that covers pretty much the exterior and interior, but when you are driving, this is something that you'll probably notice as your, if this is your daily driver. Um, but if you hear like shutters and hear something that's like unusual and something that you normally don't hear, um, then that's something that you bring up. Again, try to document as much as possible, record video, photo, whatever. This really helps them kind of figure out what the issues are. You know, the main thing is just making sure that there's nothing wrong with the alignment because alignment work can be really expensive. I know that was a lot in the list, but take your time. That's why we kind of do it in that thousand mile mark at the minimum. You could go a little bit longer. Some of these may feel like it's a gray area or a little bit unsure if it's an actual issue or if you're being like a little bit overreactive. But honestly, I would go ahead and ask your service. And usually they can actually do a diagnostic remotely as well. Hopefully this video was super helpful. Go ahead and download this. PDF, you know, print it out and do this, right? And if this helped, click on that subscribe button. We'd love to hear what you think about this list and let us know if you have any feedback or any questions. Happy warranty checking and we'll see you later.